Hello, precious one. I greet you in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Just as Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Jesus Christ gave us a mandate to go out there and make disciples. And our main mandate is to go out there to preach the word of God. Many a times, many people go around searching for miracles, prophecies. Why? Because they lack the word of God. Today, on our program, Exposition of the Word, rightly dividing the word of truth, we want to give an account of the word. Let's preach the word, word and the gospel. So today, as we start our maiden edition of the exposition of the word, I have with me Reverend Kofi Sabo to start with. Reverend, I greet you. How is life? The grace of God. God is with us. We thank God. What do you have for us today? Uh, so for we thank you. We thank our Father too. Um, I would like to share a special way with you and our brothers and sisters who are watching us. Well, actually, I have this message that I have titled The Irony of Blessing. When we talk about <clears throat> the blessing of God, most of the time when you hear that somebody has been blessed by the Lord, a lot of things come in mind. But the most easiest thing that comes in mind is that the person is supposed to be enjoying life. So when, whenever you are blessed, you are supposed to enjoy life. And um, to most of us, enjoying life comes with the luxuries of life. In modern times, you need, at least you must have a car, a house, a beautiful family. You must be flashy in the environment to be the blessed one of God. So this is what I want us to talk about and just to try and see if it is how the blessing of the Lord is. So, um, when we take a look at, well actually I have this message that I have titled, The Irony of Blessing. When we talk about <clears throat> the blessing of God, most of the time when you hear that somebody has been blessed by the Lord, a lot of things come in mind. But the most easiest thing that comes in mind is that the person is supposed to be enjoying life. The way God blessed Abraham. God, the Bible tells us that God blessed Abraham and told him that he was going to be a father of many nations. And through him, the world would be blessed. But Abraham himself lived throughout his life and saw only two sons coming out of him. So in most situations, if it were any other human being of today, he might be thinking that the blessing that God bestowed on him wasn't realized. But I don't know the actual mentality of Abraham before he died. All what I know is that he was able to bless his son Isaac. And through Isaac, Isaac also had two sons, Jacob and Esau. And Isaac also blessed Jacob. And look at the blessings that Jacob received. If you, if, you, if you read Genesis chapter 27 verse 28, it tells us of the blessings that Jacob received. Let's read that one because it's very important. It says that so, Genesis chapter 27 verse 28 says, May God give you heaven's deep and earth richness and abundance of grain and wine. May nations save you and people bow down to you. Be Lord over your brothers, and may the sons of your mother bow down to you. May those who curse you be cursed, and may, and may those who bless you be blessed. Now, if you look at this blessings, it is, it is something that every human being would wish for. It is, it is a package that is filled with everything that every human being needs. But the truth of the matter is, in many situations, 
when you look at the beginning of Isaac's uh, Jacob's uh, um, ministry after the blessing, you realize that right after Jacob received the blessing, he went into servitude. The truth of the matter is, he went and started serving under his uncle. He served for 14 years for his wife. Right from serving, it was as if that was the beginning of his life. But it wasn't. He had to come and encounter the same father, brother that he stole the blessing from. And had to actually try and please this brother because he feared for his life. Now, you, you ask yourself, after all these blessings has been poured on somebody, and then the person goes to save, but in the, in the blessing, in the package, he was supposed to be saved. But he ends up saving people. He saved for his wife. He saved for his possession. Now, he comes to meet his brother. That is also in the package that the brother is supposed to bow. But he comes trying to please the brother instead. So you ask yourself, what kind of blessing is that? Now when you look at the lifestyle of Israel, you realize that even at the point where he was able to get all his sons and he was about to realize a nation, one of his sons disappeared mysteriously and they had to end up in Egypt. Now you ask yourself, Israel didn't go to Egypt because of anything they went to Egypt because they wanted food so somebody that was supposed to have abundance of grain had to migrate to another nation because of food and in that nation though they were cherished for a period of time they became slaves for almost 400 years so this blessing was on them so you ask yourself what is the package many a times when God blesses us it comes in this kind of wrap. It is wrapped, it is, it is in a package. But the initial packaging is rather full of troubles. So what you go through, you will have to unwrap problems upon problems upon problems before you come to your actual glory. For 400 years, Israel had to save in Egypt. But they were blessed now when god took them out of egypt he took them through a desert for 40 years israel wandered in the desert but they were blessed they didn't have a place to sleep now when you read later in deuteronomy chapter 4 you realize that when israel came to a point they came to meet edom which is the brother, the same brother who didn't receive the blessing. And Edom had a city, a fully built, established city. Meanwhile, Israel was still wandering the desert. And God had to warn Israel that, look, this is your brother's land. I have given it to them. So even if you need food and water, you have to beg them for it or you have to buy them. But who was blessed here? It was Israel. So you ask yourself, what kind of blessing is this? Full of troubles, indeed. Now, let me tell you something. When God blessed Joseph, anytime you hear the name of Joseph, you are, you are, you are expecting to see him jubilating, celebrating, filled with happiness. But look at the life of Joseph. Now, let me, let me just be specific. When I, I say Joseph, I mean the father of Jesus Christ. Mm. But you see, in both cases, both Josephs had almost the same beginning. Joseph was blessed. I mean, the, the first Joseph was blessed. But he had to go through a lot of problems before his blessings was unveiled. Joseph, the father of Jesus Christ, comes into the scene. Somebody who is to father the Savior. He was supposed to be happy. But how can a man's wife, somebody that you trust so much, before you realize the woman is with a baby, and the Holy Spirit has to appear to you and convince you that the baby 
that the, the, the mother is carrying is from the Lord. Now, even if you agree, look at the problems that the man had to go through to the extent that he had to run with this child for so many years because he had to hide from the authorities. Mm -hmm. That was the father of the Savior. He had the opportunity to father the Savior, mm -hmm. but look at the problems that he encountered. Let's go back to the story of Israel. Mm -hmm. After all these things that Israelites went through, let's see where the blessings lie. Number one, in most situations, Christians of today, we don't see our blessings. We feel because we are poor, because we don't have our own homes, because we don't have our own cars, even if it is a church, because we don't have our own nicely built building, we feel like maybe the Lord has abandoned us, or we are not completely blessed, or we are not blessed. Most of the times, that's how we feel. I completed secondary school with this man. Currently, this man is the CEO of this big company. He changed cars. He has a beautiful wife. He has a beautiful home with a beautiful family. I have nothing to boast of. So, how did God create me this way? We keep asking these questions most of the time. We keep comparing ourselves with people. If Israel had the chance, he compared himself with Edom. And he realized that, look, after I have served so many years, Edom had the freedom to build his city. And now he has a, build, a beautiful city, well built. And I have nothing. I am still chasing a promised land, which I have not even yet entered. What kind of blessing is this? So Reverend, at the end of the day, we are blessed, but we can't see our blessing. Whenever we take a look at our life, mm -hmm. we need to ask ourselves one thing. Who are we working with? As Christians, who are we working with? Let's take a look at the life of Israel. Israel worked with the Lord for all these years that I've been talking about. The Lord was with Israel. The Bible makes us understand that even on the desert, God was leading Israel. In the morning, he was with them. In the evening, he was with them. Now, if you take a look at some incident that happened, a king saw Israel from afar. And he had to go and beg a prophet to come and curse them for him. Why? Because he feared Israel. He heard of Israel and then the fear of the people came upon him. And they started trembling because they knew, they said, we have heard of them. How God can use them, how through them God can extinguish our generation. The fear of the people came on the nation. Why? Because there was a mighty God that moved with Israel. As I speak with you, during that time, Israel was on the desert complaining about food and water. Mm. But the Lord was with them. How can a nation be in a situation on the desert, the Lord was supplying them with food and meat from heaven? Mm. They walked, the Bible makes us understand that they walked for 40 years. They never changed clothing. Mm. Sometimes we see we have only one shoe. Sometimes we feel like we have only one clothes and so we see ourselves cursed mm. somebody can change clothes five times a day but he spends the entire year in hospital mm. somebody can change cars ten times a day but he's not as happy as you are mm. some people spend millions on hospital bills drugs alone mm. but the whole year you don't buy any drug when you are sick and you go on your knees and you pray to your father, the next day you receive your healing. Mm. But yet you don't see the presence of the Lord with you. Mm. You don't see yourself as blessed. Mm. Sometimes you pass through a situation where you are passing through, nobody will pass through there and come alive. But you go through it and the Bible makes us understand that even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord is with us. Mm. So when you walk through this shadow and you come out successfully, it is because there is a mighty person, there is a mighty God who has you in the palm of his hand. Mm. 
So the irony of blessing, the, you, you, you take a look at yourself. Whenever you compare yourself with the world and the people of this world, you will never see your blessing. Mm. For you to see your blessing, mm. you need to start seeing yourself in the eye of God. How is God treating me? What is God taking me through? Because if you study the life of Israel, all these problems that they went through, it was, number one, it was an opportunity for them to learn. Number two, it was an opportunity for them to fully display the strength and vigor and the power of their God. There are certain things that Israel went through that no other nation can go through. There are certain miracles and stories that you hear about Israel that no other nation will ever have such a story to tell. Now all these things happen in our lives. Some situations we are going through, some circumstances that we are passing through, wherever we find ourselves currently, it is all because God wants to show His power, His strength in our lives. So whenever we feel or we know that we are blessed, and we just look out for the luxuries of life. Sometimes it will not just come like that. In most cases, it comes in a different form. It comes in this form that when you are blessed, God will intentionally put problems in your path. It is your ability to solve these problems, to go through these situations and come out victorious. This is what will establish your blessing. So in most cases, we are blessed because God knows that we have the strength to deal with the problems and the challenges that he is putting on our path. So our blessing is in our ability to handle our problems and solve them. Mm. Christians of today are blessed, but our blessing lies in our ability to solve our own problems. Reverend, I will, I will encourage you. You see, the problem with mankind is that Christians of today, we are praying that God should take problems away from our lives. Mm. And this is the reason why it is difficult for us to realize our blessings. If we will only pray, let us pray this prayer. Let's pray that God will make us stronger. Mm. Let us pray that God will make us wiser. Let us pray that God will make us better than the situations that we are in. Now, you see, when you have problems, Pray for strength. Mm. Don't pray for the problems to disappear. Mm. When God made man, the Bible makes us understand that He created a perfect world for us. But Reverend, do you know that God didn't build a house for man? Mm. So I can imagine that the next day after God created man, it rained. And there was no shelter. Mm. So this problem, God intentionally put it there because He made us like Himself. So he gave us the ability to also exercise our God power. Mm. So when the problem comes, then it is your opportunity to display the strength of God within you to solve the problem. That is the irony of blessing. So when God blesses you, you are not supposed to start living on the rosy side of life the next day. When God blesses you, you are supposed to start solving problems the next day. And that is the irony of blessing. When God blesses you, it means that you are supposed to find the problems of humanity, the problems of your environment. You are supposed to encounter them and solve them. Because whoever God created in his own image and likeness, he had to come and meet a world which is filled with darkness. So if God blesses you because you have his image, then you are supposed to come and meet a problem and solve the problem. Mm. Reverend, if, if, if God had not made the world as perfect as we see it today, we wouldn't have recognized God as He is. So, when God blesses us, He gives us the ability, number one, to solve problems. Yeah. So, it means that the problems are supposed to come. Number two, when God blesses us, he gives us an opportunity to make a name through what he will take us through. Mm. So Israel made a name because of what God took them through. If he will not take you to the Red Sea, 
and cause your enemy to see the Red Sea opening for you, mm. you will not make a day. Mm. So the next day, the other nations were talking about Israel mm. because of what they went through. Mm. God used them to make a name for themselves. Mm. Number three, God will always give you the opportunity to see the good things that other people have so that when yours come, you will be able to see it's better than this. Mm. Because God was always promising Israel of this land filled with milk and honey. And they were actually begging and buying food on the road. Mm. They had not reached where they were going. And they had to go through some processes. So when they finally arrived on their land, whatever they will see there will be better than what they were envying or what they were actually longing for in their hearts. You can imagine when you are going through a city and people are there cooking different kinds of food and for 40 years you've been eating the same manner. Mm -hmm. And then you long for another food. But God will tell you that if you need that food, you have to buy it. Because your time is coming when you reach your own land you will get whatever you want in abundance. Mm. So finally, when you reach your own land and it starts coming, then you see the blessings of the Lord. Now finally, God will also use it to let you value what you get at the end of the day. So he will take you through this hunger. He will make you thirst for water so that when you finally get the food and the water, the land, the goodness of the land, you will learn how to value it. Mm. See, when you when you become rich the next day, you will not value money. Mm. But when God takes you through handling one CD a day, sometimes 10 CDs a week, then you learn the value of money. So that a time will come in your life when you get 100,000 CDs a day, you will not misuse it. So God will intentionally take you through processes so that when you finally reach the peak of your blessing, you will value what God has given you. The irony of blessing is that whenever a man is blessed, he has to go through the learning process. Whenever a man is blessed, he has to go through the developmental process. But the most important thing is when a man is blessed, he has to go through the processes of the, of the Lord. And the processes of the Lord is that God could have created the entire world with everything in it in one day, but He chose to do it in seven days. Because in everything God created, there is a process. So, Reverend, God is telling us that yes, He has blessed us, but when you look around and you see people better than you are, then it will remain like that. When you begin to see yourself better than people, whatever you are going through today, you must see it as a process. We have a story to tell tomorrow, but our story will not be beautiful without today. Mm. So whatever we are going through today is part of the story we are going to tell tomorrow. As Christians, God has promised us something. He has given us a package. But the package is wrapped in problems. We have to take our time, unwrap them problem by problem. And at the end of the day, when we finally unveil the package, it will be a beautiful package that we will be proud of. And we can boldly say that this is what the Lord has done. Amen. 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 God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And this is what the Lord has done or can do. Brethren, this is a clear message from our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's as I would say, our blessing is a package. It's not a quite a stock film. It is a young toy. This is a in life, I'm a woman, 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 I'm a woman,
kunya adili hapa mmoja pale sana nyangu kuhusu ni senya sana omo se yuya si enye mbi o ono ma body chair sana basani mani ya time pale so for last na e mini aba ko kan se ni o se adam fu e sono o se ni mi na ubi bi na no kasa ya na ye din se e be dia tun but e mu be free na yesu kan chesa but e nyame hihe hwe woni mi se mami papa nyame hihe mi anu mami papa ni mi anu oh e ye adia nyampo bon ne de maye o bi ni ba o tu se ni mami ana ne papa ni mi anu na bo bi se nyampo bon de ba tu revelation but adam for one how to sit up so what you say? It is put to you a damn for most of the time. When you are not open, say when you favor few or more, and when you favor be few or only, you know, you tend to show them more love. So one day here, when you be back, we must know now. Dear dear, I was saying we are not only young, now we are more damn for. So what you say? The truth of the matter is, a dear dear, you are not only cheer your man. The entire movie value. It is in God trying to give us gifts. Or my inner baby experience be a firm one, and my new value. Nya nyangu pondeche. Tovu nase ya mi Godfather, Doctor Maros Moro kaze wazi. Nyangu ponde ni padi ni chair loka. Nini na yimu ya kuni. But it is the most powerful tool that every man has. So na baby nyangu pondeche ni baby ya entire new value. Nini? Or they actually have many problems. No, they are shared problems. If the problems are with them, so if they are okay, no, you think how will I be able to know say where the 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 time of test and trial? I know, I know. Earlier, I hear when they were saying we need to move in the and they need to answer. Now, we need to move. The baby, the young couple, now, because they are worrying. Am I you? So for time one, Mary. Any use no. Now go pon a small go for man a be catch a ense. When you need to be busy. And it's a true time when Mary ever will help. Or ba a work come. Na ya swa no dunu fi be be a work se. And then you go be a do for. I will not pay be ni. We will be busy. It's a job of patches or how a kind blessings no. Challenges. A year package. A year package. Say, nyango pon kati ni dusi. Say, o beye wa hine. Eno o wili ni wa chene say, but. And sana o beye wa hine no go busi ya fobe ton o. O be kwa kwa ya kwa. E ni o be tu brizi. O ma ni hui wui wui ni na. Instantly ya kobe kanye say fa wa hine. Mempe. Revelation. But o kati ni no say, o beye wa hine ma ni timu ya nite. Sa ata ya mwini fi o na hine yi yo. Kwa na ne ye yi yi fi yi. O kya nye yi yi fi yi. It is an sign of bits in your own hand. Obey passive through a process, rejection, false accusation, imprisonment. We move in our power to him. Now, says Charles, who couldn't have put on one was so born in the year. It is part of the package. And now, dear man, Joseph, a story not yet done. And yes, we are working on. Because Joseph, at the end, yes, not Joseph, you are here. And I didn't mean I don't see baby, I didn't mean I don't buy it. No, mom, maybe I need to know because I got story in your day. But look at what Joseph passed through. So, me in a car movie. That is what makes the story of Joseph unique. I didn't see any packaging, and that is how God always will package His blessing. Jesus Christ to alone will grant the ultimate blessing, but. Shia ujana hini nuko basa siso be sofa e. Look at what Jesus went through, the pain, the agony. And see, blessings do not come just like that. Blessings do not come just like that. The last question, so, what can I say? Is also going through difficult times make us strong and better people. Yes. Also, what what can I say? Um, um, Paul can say me. Na mamika Paul masimbi yaka kwenye papa na kwa njia ni yangu pamoja sioni di usro mi ni kumano, ema papa ni ni yangu kujuli, na papa nose abiri ya yebeti na tuwe fiasimu, na uhu nose 
authorities of wherever he went no interrupting that was his blessing in disguise mm. and you see that is how all of us are supposed to see it our, our father himself no and a of our pains yes it's a christian media ever pains because that is why today we are seeing most of the youth doing Sakama. Granny helped us get up for miracles and prophecies all around. Study the word of God, which is a blessing. And mind you, when you go through difficulties, it's a blessing in disguise. My name is Reverend Moses Quigwatha, your host for exposition of the word. It is rightly providing the word of truth. This program was courtesy by and for Jesus Foundation and Multi Minds TV. We'll come your way next time. God, richly bless you. Amen and bye-bye.